Welcome back to Geek Harbor Paddling. Today we're doing a video review. Hey guys, so my name is Austin. I used to be a paddler and I paddled for nine years. Uh, today in our video review, we're gonna be talking about elbow height and elbow angle um, and just kind of keeping our elbows relaxed, either at a shoulder height or slightly below. We definitely don't want to be reaching above and shooting it forward. That's where we're going to see a little bit of injury. And so kind of working on it, some injury prevention in that aspect. Career highlights for me is I won nationals in K1 a few times, never in team boats. Uh, I was really more of a thousand meter paddler, a 5K and a 10K paddler where I really did well. And then I could do decent in like 200s, Got like a 38 and a 200, a 42 minute and 12 second 10K. Um, and today I'm mainly going to be talking about shoulder height, elbow height, and the kind of the angles that we're going to be paddling at. Um, and it's going to be a combination of us looking at uh, paddlers that have done well. Uh, so we're going to look at Renee Polson, who was an Olympian and at his first Olympics when he paddled at 19, he went in and got a second place. So silver at the Olympics at, at that age. And he has a technique that I think is a lot different than a lot of people. And it just kind of shows you how there's not one way to do it and kind of hopefully do a little bit of injury prevention as well with the shoulder height and the elbow height is what I'm going to be talking about. Everything is so, so, so low. And I think that we've always had a like, huge push in, in kayaking that you have to be super high and everything has to be up. But I mean, hey, he's somebody that has meddled in a thousand and multiple Olympics. So he's, he's clearly doing something different and something right though at the same time. So he's a very, very strong guy, obviously. And he's He's a very wide, wide person, very built, um, and he's just taking advantage of his length. I think he's like 6'2 or 6'4 or 2, so kind of helping him out there. Um, but a big part of what I want to talk about today is, yeah, like I said, his elbow height and when we're entering the water. Because looking at kind of like the video and paddling with you guys over the past week or two, um, a lot of people are paddling, paddling with their arms and shooting them up in this direction. And we want to just keep that elbow either at our shoulder height or a little bit lower because a lot of people, at least when I was paddling back in my day, a lot of people were injuring their shoulder because they were pushing their arm a little bit too high. And we just want to, you know, ultimately we're all young kids and we want to kind of avoid that injury as much as possible. So just how he's doing it up there, uh, just keep your arms relaxed. We want to be at an angle forward. We don't want to have our arm like this at a 45. We want to have it like this at a 45. And other arm fully extended as we're pressing in. And that gives us the ability to push in this direction with our arm. And it's kind of a little bit more force when we're paddling. Again, so just trying to keep it at a relaxed angle and yep, paddle forward. What I always did when I kayaked and in my best, my best workouts and my best races is that I, I had somebody in mind that I like to paddle with or paddle with, I guess, or somebody's technique. So for me, it was Renee Bolson, um, super good paddler. And yeah, so I would just watch his video technique and just when I would paddle and sometimes when I get irritated because somebody else would splash me or cut me off and like, you know, that really upset me. I just like, all right, I want to like just leave them in my desk. And there's a few times I was able to do that. And like one of the times I was paddling with one of Canada's best paddlers for like U16 at the time. And he, most of the time he was way quicker than me. But him and somebody else just cut me off super bad, and we were paddling up in Ottawa and Canada, and it got super irritated at him. And we're paddling with Canada's also junior, fastest junior paddler, and I was able to just kind of like throw his technique in my mind and sprint past both of them and just leave them in my wash and do that for the rest of the workout. And if I was able to do that all the time. I probably would have been been winning Pan Ams and stuff. But so I'd really recommend it for everybody in here just to find some paddler that is that it does well or has done well in the past you know, 15, 20 years and know their technique and kind of learn it well and just try to memorize their technique. So that's one of those things where there's no pure right answer and it's gonna, have, it's gonna be good in a lot of ways to uh, fully extend your arm um, and just like get as much reach, reach as you possibly can. But when you fully extend your arm, like when I take my arm and take my body and I push out as much as possible, all my muscles need to relax. Right? So I'm not tensed up and ready for the next stroke or paddle. But if I'm more of in a locked position, arm flexed, and my arm might be a tiny bit bent. I'm not saying that we bend it to this point. 
but I'm not saying we hyperextend to this point, but a little bend in flex is okay sometimes, because then that means that we're ready for the next stroke. And I think another thing to look at, because, I mean, you know, we have that picture-perfect technique, and this is somebody that's, you know, an Olympian, he's won world championships, and he still doesn't even have that picture-perfect technique. But he's able to kind of compensate that for being a big person and being physically fit, which is, you know, another big part of the sport. One other person I want to show you who has more of, more of the technique that's taught, his name is Eric Varis Larson. Uh, this guy is probably going to be one of like, the best paddlers of all time. Uh, he wipes my 10K record. He did a 36-minute 10K, and he has the world record for it. Um, super good paddler. He was paddling in his like, mid-30s as well. He's a Norwegian guy, but he, paddled, he medaled at three or four different Olympics. So it's showing you that he wasn't able just to you know, be that you know, one-and-done guy, but he was able to consistently show up and win the 1,000-meter race. A little bit more of the technique that we teach and his setup's a lot higher than everybody, like, you know, higher than Renee's is and higher than my picture-perfect technique. You can kind of see something else that these paddlers have about them is that when they're paddling, they don't look super tensed up. Their shoulders aren't strung up. They're not pushing their head forward. They're sitting up straight tall, and they look really relaxed. And, like, you know, this is something that they do, that they are professionals at it. And I, I think if you guys notice that about anybody that is truly good or truly a master of what they're doing, whether it's a firefighter or a paddler, that they're just going to look really natural, really relaxed in the technique that they're, they're doing. So I think that's something that we should also kind of strive for, just, you know, taking a deep breath, relaxing our shoulders, relaxing our arms, making sure that we're not death gripping our paddle and just paddle forward. A lot of rotation, a lot of hips, and a lot of core that they were getting out of it. But um, one thing I'm kind of noticing a little bit here is our shoulder height on the left side. Um, it's probably happening on the right side too. I just don't think I can see it as much. Is the the shoulder is popping up on the left side and going this direction, right? And we want to keep it at the one level, whether you know we're paddling down here like Rene Polson or we're paddling up here like Eric first Larson. One thing we don't want to do is we don't want to put it up and we don't want our elbow go going above our shoulder. And that's like over over the past like two weeks kind of watching everybody, I think that's something that would be really beneficial for everybody is really focusing on your elbow height. And that's the main thing I kind of want to emphasize today is uh, not throwing your elbow up, but just planting it in the water and pushing forward, okay? So James, do you kind of see what I'm talking about with the elbow? And just like the shoulder height, so just trying to keep our elbow and our shoulder at the same height and not just throwing it above, if that makes sense. But just like there on that left side, you can kind of see it a lot. Right there that your elbow, your elbow is just hiking up so much there and we just kind of want to relax it and keep it down. So I think that's like kind of a, a similar thing for you is uh, I know we talked about this last time that we were paddling, but just kind of like relaxing your hand grip because to me it just looks like you're really like you're holding on that paddle so so tight, and I think that's what's kind of like forcing your elbows up because you're like you're not re allowing any relaxation when you're pushing with your top hand. Have you? Yeah. Have you noticed much of a difference yet? Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. Like when I really try to relax my hands because that's something that took me a little while to figure out. Um, is well, let's try not to hit anything, but. Um, so if you death grip it here, it forces your like elbow physically up because you can't like you can't death grip it and move your hand this way. Like I physically, my elbow won't go past this point. Like it's my elbow's my wrist is just gonna break. So you have to go up that way. So if you physically just when you're pushing forward with this top hand, you don't need these four fingers. Like these four fingers aren't gonna do anything for you when it comes to this point until you reach here, and that's when you can start to grab it. So completely re relaxing, letting go of these fingers is gonna be fine for you. You can just push the whole way through, and it's here when you need to grab onto it again. Right there. There's a 45 degree angle here, right? But there's also a 45 degree angle here. So we want to have somewhere like right here, because um, it's just like if you're going to punch someone, for example. If you walk up and you try to punch me like this, that's not going to be powerful at all. But if you walk up and punch me like this, then you're going to start to hurt me. You're going to start to do some damage. And that's like a big part, like, that's where the core kind of comes in, and we're forcing it forward. Because again, we're not powerful here. Like, nobody's going to be powerful here. If you, here, stand up real quick. And then, yeah. Okay, so have your arm at a 45 just like this. Okay, and just with your top, top arm, let go of this hand, push me forward. Okay, now bend it at a 45. See, that's a lot more, a lot more, a bigger difference. You have a lot more power and a lot more strength. 
Like you can physically push me a lot further. Is yeah. that first time when you push? Yeah. I wasn't. There's not much to resist against, but that second time I could actually like, you know, feel myself having to push back. We have like a 90 degree angle here, and then a 45 degree angle here, and like this is like where a lot of our power comes from. So keeping so, so our everyone. keeping our elbow relaxed at the same height at a 90 degree angle, and then dropping it down here. And that's where we kind of want to keep our setup at. Just something like this. And then again, like our hand doesn't have to be straight out in front of us at eye level, but don't let it be all the way up here, and don't let it be all the way down here. We kind of want it in between like shoulder height and eye height. Somewhere there is like our safe range where we're gonna be able to exit at a safe time and you know avoid any injuries. So you're doing a great job of sitting up straight and like being really relaxed, I would say. Maybe trying to keep your, your outstretched arm, getting it a little bit further out, I guess if that makes sense, and really just like reaching with your whole body. I know that contradicts a little bit what I said about keeping your muscles flexed, um, but it's kind of a combination like where you want to like stretch and reach as much as possible, but still have that muscle flexed. Especially with starts, I think uh, kayak starts are a great way to kind of emphasize like when and where you don't want your muscles flexed. Because if you go to start on, right, I think, are we all starting on our left side, I'm assuming still? If you're starting on your left left side and your arm is fully, or, you know, right here, but your arm is relaxed, it's gonna, you're gonna add another half a second or one second to your start time versus if your arm's flexed at this point, like my arm right now, I can't really see because I'm wearing a shirt, but my bicep is flexed, my fingers are all tightened, and I'm ready to go. So as soon as I hear that whistle, the ready, set, go, or as soon as the gate drops, you're able to put as much force into it as quickly as possible. That way your brain doesn't take that half second for you to hear the go, and then, okay, now I have to flex my muscles, and now I have to move it. So muscles are already flexed, and all you need to do is literally just be told to move your arm. So I say, yeah, really just try to, like, lengthen out and get a little bit more reach and keep your arm flexed and just kind of get get that intensity and power and that you can. Everything that's leading us is our core and our legs. And so once we get that in the water is we just want to follow it through with our core. So like if you want to get up in this angle, your body follows through and then naturally your arm should go forward to this angle. Because that's like something big that we should just try to focus on too is not shooting your arm forward because we don't want to just shoot your arm, like put it in and just push it forward just to do it. Like we're, everything is driven by our core and our core is like the leading component along with our legs and hips. So follow through. Your, uh, your elbows were flying up a little bit, so when you hit this point, you're going up, and you just want to keep it at this level and relax, because we're guided by our body. So, um, hopefully I'm doing an okay job at it. And I'm trying to pedal with like a somewhat low technique, like uh, Rene Paulson was, and having just being relaxed in the shoulders. Again, my arms and hands aren't going up very high. It's like a little bit lower of a like, technique in a setup that we normally teach, but we just want to keep our elbow not or keep, prevent our elbow from shooting up because that's where a lot of people injure themselves elbow goes up and it kind of throws everything off because it's really a natural position for us to like you know to throw a baseball this high or anything if that makes sense